Okay, so we started this module last time and uh, looked at uh, what is an optimization problem and what's a decision problem, the difference between the two. Uh, so again, uh, just to uh, remember, so optimization problem is a problem for which you want to either minimize or maximize the solution. So all the problems we have seen, most of them we have seen so far optimization problems like uh, minimum spanning tree, shortest path problem and all this stuff. And even the dynamic programming module, all of them we saw were optimization based. You want to uh, pick the maximum number of value for the coins or minimize the number of coins to pick in the coin change problem or maximize the total value of the items you pick up in the knapsack and so on. So all those things are optimization problems. Um, we well, have seen one decision problem uh, in data structures which is the bipartite graph problem. So given a graph you want to decide whether the graph is bipartite or not. So in a, in a decision problem uh, we want an S or no answer as the end result. We don't want to have a maximum value of something or minimum value of something and so on. We just want a boolean, an S or no answer as the output. Uh, we might have seen some more decision problems uh, in, one of, in both these courses put together. But basically these are the two broad categories of problems uh, we could say we have seen so far. Uh, now, uh, we'll come back to these problems, but now uh, in this module, we look at um, uh, one, um, what is called, uh, kind of data structure, uh, it's more like um, a characteristic of a graph, it's called a tour. A tour is basically a sequence of vertices such that we can start with one vertex and go around all the vertices of the graph and come back to the starting vertex. So that means you should visit all the other vertices of the graph exactly once and come back to the starting vertex. So if we do that, we can say the graph, that's a two. So in this case, we say A, B, C, F, E, D, A is a two. So we can start with one vertex, go around and come back to the starting vertices. So all the other vertices should be visited exactly once and we come back to a starting vertex. Now if we can say there's a two A, B, C, E, F, E, D, A, we can also say there's a two B, C, F, E, D, A. So we can start with B, go around to A and then come back to B. So it's like a cycle. So we can start with one vertex, go around and come back to the starting vertex around that cycle. That's a tour. Uh, but remember the tour has to have all the vertices in a graph. So the problem here is this, given a graph, it could be some arbitrary graph like this, what we want is an S or no answer whether the graph has a tour or not. So a tour can also be called a circuit, okay, so a cycle, tour, tour is a very common uh, more uh, generic name, you can call this a circuit. Now, uh, so this problem is called a Hamiltonian circuit problem, so given a graph, an arbitrary graph again, uh, uh, what we want to find out is whether that graph has a tour or not, an S or no answer. Now this graph ha does not have a tour because whatever we could try on this graph, we cannot come up with a sequence of vertices such that we can start with one vertex, go around all the vertices and come back to starting vertex. We cannot do that. So this graph is said to not have a 2. Okay. Uh, so now this is a Hamiltonian circuit problem is a decision problem because you want to answer or no answer. Now again the graph does not have any edge weights, uh, typically it's unweighted uh, graph. Um, now we, it's also mostly undirected, we could have directed versions of this also but typically deal with undirected graphs. Now, other problem we are going to look at with regard to tourists called a travel, uh, traveling salesman problem. So here typically you are given a complete graph and also with edge weights. So remember what a complete graph is. A complete graph is a graph in which you have edge between any two vertices and uh, each edge will have some weight. Okay. 
So as the name itself indicates, this scenario is typically used, it, it has a lot of, again, lot of applications, but one application is like you have a salesman who has to visit, or even a postman who has to visit, uh, say, certain streets or street intersections or anything you want to capture as a node. So he has to visit, say, in this case, these four vertices, and these are, say, the possible ways he can visit the road, so the miles he has to travel from one uh, vertex to another vertex or one stop to another stop okay so what you want to do is you want to give him a schedule as that he can make all those uh, visits to all those four vertices such that the total distance he has traveled is minimum okay so you have a salesman who has to make all this four uh, visit all these four uh, houses let us say and these are the distances between the two houses so he ha we have to uh, make uh, give him a schedule uh, such that he uh, he visits all the four wet houses uh, by traveling a minimum distance so that could be a problem so you're given a complete graph and you have the edge weights for the distances between any two uh, cities or places you want to visit so, uh, if you look at a brute force version of this, uh, you could enumerate all possible tools because a complete graph always has a tool, it's guaranteed. Uh, and there are a lot of combinations of vertices you could come up with to constitute a tool. So, because it's a complete graph, again, any two uh, vertices are connected. You can say you can go to A, B, then B, C, then C, D, A. So, that's a tool start with A come back to A then again A B D C A so you can write down all possible combinations uh, so here I have a few combinations I think those are the combinations you can come up with for this four vertex uh, graph but there could be some more but uh, so if you if you compute the weight of this tour so the weight of the tour is just the sum of the edge weights so here I have written the weights of this tool, of the different tools. So um, eight is the minimum weight. Uh, so whatever you try, you cannot come up with a tool of weight less than eight on this graph. Of course, there are some other tools with a larger weight also. So the problem here is an optimization problem, or you can frame this as an optimization problem, where given a complete graph of edge weights, what is the minimum weight tool? that is the optimization version of this problem. Now you can frame a decision version of this problem also. Uh, given again a complete graph of this edge weights, is there a tour of weight less than a certain value? So for example, uh, since we know for this small graph, eight is the minimum weight tour, given a complete graph of this edge weight values, is there a tour of weight less than say eight in this graph? The answer is no, because there's no tour of weight less than 8 in this graph. Now, is there a tour of weight less than 10? The answer is yes. So, for the decision version, you have either an S or no answer. Okay. Uh, whereas, uh, for the optimization version, you have a numerical value, a maximum or minimum value, depending on the application. Okay. So, so far, we looked at... Uh, uh, Tour, of course, optimization decision problems, and then what is a tour, and then what is a Hammond twin circuit problem, and what is a traveling salesman problem. Now, see here, like we came up with the decision and optimization versions for this problem, which originally looked like simply an optimization problem because that's what we would say a minimum weight tour given a complete graph of edge weights. And I showed you how we can come up with a decision version. Is there a tour of weight less than a certain value? Then it becomes a decision problem. We can come up with decision problems for even the minimum spanning tree problem. Given, a, given an arbitrary graph with edge weights for a particular graph, is there a minimum spanning tree of weight less than say 30? You find the minimum spanning tree by running Kruskal's algorithm. And then if the weight is less than 30, you say yes. If the weight is above 30, because you know minimum spanning, whatever you, the minimum weight you come, you, come, you find with the Kruskal's algorithm, that is the minimum possible weight of a spanning tree. Uh, so you say no as the answer. 
they come up with the decision version also for a minimum spanning tree problem. All right, so uh, let me stop for a minute and save this video.